So which radio rules? Let's talk about it. Stick around, and we'll get right to it. Hey, welcome back, guys. Jason, KM4ACK. I am getting ready for Hamcation and trying to figure out which of these HTs do I really need to have with me. And uh, what I found is, well, I need several uh, for various jobs. There is no one HT that I can carry that will do all the things. So normally I would carry a minimum of two HTs, one that's APRS and one that's not APRS related. Uh, typically you'll get better battery life uh, from a non-APRS radio. But let's talk about the four radios that I'm going to be carrying with me to Orlando, why I'm going to be carrying those, and then I'm going to show you the antennas that I chose to go along with these. Now the first one I'm going to start out with is the D75. Fantastic radio, love this guy for APRS, but it's not going to be the radio that I carry for APRS on my person. The reason is the D75 does one thing that none of the other radios will do. It will function as a standalone APRS digipeter. And I do want to run a digipeter while we're in Orlando, so that particular radio is going to be designated just for being a digipeter. Now, sure, I could carry my digipeter that I built with the um, Raspberry Pi and the FT65, but this is a much smaller package. And assuming that you connect this to a 12-volt external power source, we can run this thing for days. And that is absolutely no problem whatsoever, provided I'm in the RV. Now, the second radio shouldn't surprise anyone at all. The Yezu VX6 will be going with me. I'm a big fan of this radio. It's basic, but it does a lot of things. 2 meter, 440, 220, and I've uh, Mars modded mine, so it will also do 6 meters. Uh, but the primary reason I carry this radio is it has the absolute best weather alert function that I have found in any HT. I actually did a whole video on uh, weather alerts with HTs, and this was definitely the one that came out on top. So I always like to have this with me when we're traveling in the RV. That way, if we do run into any risk of severe weather, I can throw this radio on uh, the weather channels, throw it in scan, and then if we do get any weather alerts, this radio is going to let me know. It has no problems whatsoever running overnight on this battery when all you're doing is scanning the weather frequencies looking for those weather alerts. So this is one of the favorite radios that almost always goes with me when we take a trip in the RV. Now this one might surprise you a little bit, but I've chosen the BTEC UV Pro to go with me on this trip for a very specific purpose. This is the only radio, uh, well, this, the VGC, uh, are the only radios outside of the D75 that has a Bluetooth TNC available to you. Now, I'm, uh, this radio is really, really good that it's come into the market at the price point. For $160-ish, you can pick up one of these radios. They've got that Bluetooth TNC and they've got APRS. Now, I will admit the APRS function on this, even if you're using the app that goes with this on your phone, is only about 80% there. They keep coming out with firmware updates, but it's just not quite uh, the same as running a D75 or, uh, say, a Yezu FT5. However, because of this Bluetooth TNC, I can connect this with my phone and run something like APRS Droid to handle all of the APRS related functions. So that's what I'm going to be doing while I'm in Orlando. This is going to be the radio that I carry on my person and then I'm going to connect it to uh, my phone over Bluetooth and run APRS Droid for all of my APRS traffic. None of these HT radios are great if you're trying to type out a message on this keyboard. Uh, and that includes the D75. Uh, yes, you can get it done, but it's not a great user experience. It's much easier if you can take one of these radios, Bluetooth it to your phone, and then use your phone's keyboard to respond to those messages or, or send those messages, whichever way that happens to go. Now, here's the downside to this radio. Well, this is kind of personal. 
I have not used this radio for an extended period of time with the Bluetooth connected to my phone, so I don't know exactly what experience I'm going to have out of this. So the plan is to take this to Orlando. I'll be running it for probably three or four solid days with it connected to my phone. I want to know how that impacts the battery life, and I want to make sure that that is stable as the day goes along. If I run into a problem, that's where the FT5 is going to come uh, into play for me. I'm really carrying this along as a backup radio. It's a fantastic standalone APRS radio. It doesn't have that Bluetooth TNC built into it, so that's why it's not going to be my primary on this trip. However, if something doesn't quite work out with that BTEC radio, I've always got the FT5 to fall back on. Now let's talk about these three antennas. These are uh, purpose-driven antennas that do one thing really well. And then after we've talked about this, I'm going to show you guys my two workhorse antennas. First up is this MFJ1806T. I think this uh, antenna was originally designed for the Yezu 817-818 line of radios. It is a 6 meter only antenna. However, I'm going to toss this one in the bag because I can use this with that VX6 if I stumble across a 6 meter antenna. I used this guy down in Huntsville last August to get into a 6 meter repeater there and it worked great. So just one of those things I like to carry with me and have in case I stumble across that uh, 6 meter repeater. Another one that I'm going to be carrying, this is, is specifically for 220. This is a signal stuff antenna and it's the BNC flavor of that antenna. I picked this one up so that if I wanted to play with 220, I would have an antenna to do so with. So that is another one of the specialty antennas. And the last one, this is another MFJ, and the writing's about worn off of it, but I think this is a 1714. This is very similar to the Smiley antennas that you can pick up as well. But this is a half-wave, two-meter telescopic antenna. So if you want to reach out a little bit further than you can with some of your other antennas, this might be a great antenna to tr give a try. So those are the three purpose-built uh, antennas for doing specific things while we're traveling. Those may or may not be used depending on the situation that I run into. But let's take a look at my two workhorses. The first one is this diamond. This is a RH 519. This is a little bitty short guy that I like to have with me because if I don't need to reach out very far uh, with 2 meter or 440, this is the perfect little antenna to keep on your radio. You don't have to worry so much about getting poked in the eye as with some of the longer antennas. And honestly, when we're at a spot like Hamcation and we're all right there on the uh, in the same general area, I just don't need that large of an antenna on my HT. So having these little antennas works very well when you're in close proximity to other users that you may want to be talking with. However, my all-time favorite antenna is still the full-size signal stick. Good for 2 meter and 440. This is a great all-around antenna that gives you a little bit more reach than the little short one does. So if I need to reach out just a little bit further, I will have this antenna with me. Another great thing about these little signal stick antennas is they will fold up and pack very small. So easy to throw this in a backpack and have it on you if you need it. And guys, I will leave some links down in the description below to some of these antennas. If you found today's information helpful, be sure to give us a thumbs up before you head off. We will see you guys on the next one. Until then, 7-3.